G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. So, toy knockoffs, specifically Transformers ones, where do they kind of sit? Well, as far as I can tell, at least within the Transformers community, they're not exactly shunned, but people do try and go after the genuine Takara and Hasbro products. But there are certain items that the third party knockoffs do tend to cover, niche markets that Hasbro and Takara don't really seem that interested in. Now, I don't actually have that much experience in the third party market when it comes to Transformers. I only have one, and that's my Starscream up here. He's a knockoff. So, other than that, all my other ones are genuine Hasbro or Takara. But I did want to add a Devastator to my collection. But the only ones available genuine are either the original G1 or what seems to the only other one it seems to be is the Combiner Wars one. Now, the Combiner Wars one is a few years old, but you can pick it up on eBay and Amazon and so forth on occasion. And at least here in Australia, it tends to run around the three to $400 mark. So while poking around on eBay just a few days ago, I came across a knockoffs Devastator for $140 delivered. And I thought, well, for $140, let's check it out. So I ordered it. And here it is. It's made by NBK. It doesn't seem to have any particular thing on it other than saying TF Engineering. Um, but let's be honest, it's Devastator. So let's check it out. So here it is. This is straight out of the packing box. Just to give you an idea, this literally arrived on my doorstep about 20 minutes ago. I bought it inside, I pulled it out of its packing box, I set up the camera, I did about half a dozen goes at the intro, and here we are. So let's take a quick look at the box. We've got a nice bit of kind of cartoony artwork, which is nice. Uh, NBK, TF Engineering, robot mode, construction truck mode, and combination mode, and a whole lot of, I'm assuming, Chinese lettering. Uh, we've got more here. Uh, we have pictures of the, on the, the, the vehicles on the back. And we have this here, which is your usual kind of product display. Although these don't look like photos, they look like that's not a photo, that's got to have been drawn. But, well, let's crack it open and see what it looks like. <clears throat> Crunchy and noisy. Okay, we have all our uh, don't want to call them constructor cons, but let's be honest, that's what they are. Um, and all the extra bits and bobs. And we also have what I'm assuming are the destructions. Which I'm assuming to be quite plentiful, given that we're talking about one, two, three, four, five robots. Six robots? Six. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got separate instruction manuals for all of them. Okay, let's remove the top bit of plastic, get you out of the way. That's kind of floating around inside, which is obviously Devastator's chess piece with a funky looking logo on the front. I hope you can see that. And here we go. So, are these... Okay, so they're not actually strapped in, uh, but all their guns are there. Let me actually pop some of these guns on their vehicles. No, that's not going to work. Right. Um, on the you, you, you've got your gun. You don't seem to have a gun. Big mitts. You and... You, and a couple more guns. So let's get this bit of plastic out of the way, and more plastic. And here we have our not-destructicons. 
and they're, they're a really good size. I know this is the oversized one, but they do look kind of good. I like them. They've got a nice kind of cartoony look to them uh, with still quite a reasonable amount of um, detail. They don't seem to... Um, the plastic seems of reasonably good quality. They roll okay. So first impressions are actually quite good. But let's take a look at them one at a time. So let's start with Not Scrapper. Um, I haven't owned a Devastator for since I was a child, so I do have the instructions right next to me. And I would actually like to say that the instructions aren't horrible. They're actually pretty decent. So let's see if I can do this. And there we have a scrapper. Okay. What I said a minute ago about the, uh, in, the instructions being quite good, you know, I take all that back. Um, they're not bad. I just, uh, I had struggle, uh, had a bit of a struggle um, uh, working a couple of them out. But that's pretty good. I think I have his crutch around the wrong way. I think it's meant to be like that. Yes. Uh, oh, no, hang on, it's meant to be like, lift his arms up a bit, come on. There we go, now I've got it. Right, got on the second go. All right, I'm going to keep moving on the other ones uh, and we'll get back to all the robots. Now here they all are in their robot form. Now I'm just going to go through a few things that I came across as I was uh, transforming them. Uh, we'll take Scrapper to begin with. Um, his transformation isn't too bad, although he does have some serious sideways elbow action going on that doesn't seem to lock in in any way um, the other one's tighter but this arm here just flops around okay these two guys here transform in a very similar manner and the main thing i don't like is the way the legs fold in the legs here, if we have a look just here, these two bits here slide all the way in from here and down and they just, you always feel like they're going to break and that one's not even sitting quite right. This guy here is not sitting quite right either and they were just constantly felt like they were going to break. So that wasn't a good thing and they were the first two I did. Um, poor old... Uh, Mixmaster here has the most atrocious feet and that's how they sit as far as I can tell. That's where they sit and he just, I mean he stands but it's not, it's not fantastic. The rest were all pretty decent. Um, there was a few bits where small panels that open up 
actually just simply came off, but I have a funny feeling they weren't actually sitting quite right to begin with in the package. Um, so other than that, there is our six robots. But let's be honest, you don't buy a pack like this for the individual robots, you buy them for Devastator. So now I'm going to transform them all into their bits and bobs and we'll put Devastator together. So now that we have all the not Destructicons all in their body parts, I think it's time to put not Devastator all together. So we'll start with the bottom half of the torso and the legs, I think. Um, these are just a case of, if you have a look here, there is these uh, slots on the top of each leg. You just tip them up kind of, you know, what is that, 30 degrees or whatever, uh, and you slot the legs in and then lock it down. And then tilt forward to lock it in eventually. There we go, it's in. Tilt it down and it's locked in. Same with the other side. Slot it in, rotate it down, and we have a couple of fairly chunky legs. So the next bit is the top half of the torso. Okay, so this here has uh, a slot just there uh, and you use two of these slots here and they lock into um, on here uh, these two little pins here and this guy here there's also a flap that folds down and plugs into that little notch there plugs in there, ah, and also you, flop, you fold up this, that plugs into the back, uh, and like I said there is one of these flaps here, and that pops in down here with a bit of a stretch, just to give it a little added security. And there's Devastator starting to actually take shape, you can fold those down. Um, the arms just simply slot in with uh, some pegs just here. There's one. And two. And his forearms, they simply twist on to some pegs. I had his arm around the right way. just like that. Come on, stay standing. And there we have stand. And then we have Devastator. Well, not Devastator. So that's Knock off Devastator, um, the oversized version, and he looks really good. Now, there are quite a lot of pros and cons when it comes to getting, at least in my opinion, uh, this particular knockoff. Um, but before we get to that, let's just put him into scale because he is quite big. Ugh. Here he is with Fort Max. Now, Fort Max is huge, um, but he does actually scale fairly well, I reckon. Uh, this is Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and I don't think that scales that well. But if you take like a little deluxe um, Siege uh, Sideswipe here, I think that goes quite well. Uh, and if you're not a Transformers person, just to give you a sense of size, there's Vintage Skeletor. So he actually fits in, not with the Masterpiece stuff, but with the rest, I think he actually fits in quite well. Now, 
the pros and cons of the, buying one of these knockoff uh, Devastators. The transformation in either into robot mode or into car mode or into um, his various body bits is fiddly at best. There was a few of them that I essentially ended up popping parts apart and putting them back together and basically parts forming them um, because either the joints were just stiff or they wouldn't pop in or whatever. Now, if you just want a good looking Devastator to sit on your shelf and look good, perfect. Absolutely brilliant. Couldn't argue with that whatsoever. And to be honest with you, that's probably what's going to happen with this guy, assuming I can actually find some shelf space for him. Um, but if you're the kind of collector that likes to get your, your Transformers or your toys down and play with them a bit, I'm not so sure. Um, I think it would end up in a lot of swearing. Uh, and for the love of God, don't buy this for a child. Um, the very first time they get it out of the box, it's either going to end up with broken pieces and a crying child or just simply a crying child. So don't do that. But for the money, if you just want something good to look, something to look good on the shelf, I've got no complaints. Um, I'm still a bit dubious about the whole third party knockoff thing, um, but here he is. Uh, and I now have him, so he'll go on my shelf probably next to Fort Max. Um, and that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was useful if you are thinking about getting uh, one of these uh, third-party uh, knockoff devastators or the other combiners that are out there. Um, and thanks for watching. So before we wrap up this video, um, I've decided to do the whole social media thing. Um, and as well as Twitter, you can now find me also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I'm trying to get a bit more into my uh, toy photography again. Uh, so you might even be seeing this guy very soon. All right, thanks.